How in-game leaders think in Counter-Strike. People always see these players as most intelligent, creative and leading figures on the server. They're able to lead a team of superstar players through great victories but also terrible slumps. There are a lot of responsibilities you have as an IGL both on the server but also off the server and it can get overwhelming very easily. On top of that you will be often criticized for the failures while star players tend to get credit for success. Also, your role is not really tied to not having great statistics as your true impact lies in something we can measure with numbers like rating. This video will act as a guideline how to be a better captain, leader and a teammate to bring your team closer to success. 1. How to deal with bad performances Key and common takeaway here is to do a self-reflection. Let's start with Apex who is leading Team Vitality, the best team in CS for majority of this year. For me, for example, something that my game has never done is that you go to uh, like uh, talking and you lost and just say, guys, it's my bad. Today I fucked up. Taking ownership of yeah. the you lost. And that's really rare because if you admit your, your mistakes, other people will come up yes. really in an easier way. You say, okay, yeah, me too. I fucked up this run. I, that's why I love to talk in, um, in, in the talks we have with the team. I love to talk first because I just say, yeah. For example, I remember when we played G2 at the major, we had a good lead 10-5 on Nuke. And this, I, I called like shit. We didn't win because of it. I should say it, guys. I just really call it like shit. It didn't work out and I wasn't there. But they were, it's fine. And then it's easier. You can see that this kind of openness brings a lot of trust in the team. And this trust is ready to spread amongst the rest of the team as well. But most importantly, what makes your teammates and your coach aware that you know you did mistakes and you are ready to fix them. You don't need a teammate to point out the mistake you did. You need teammates to help you correct it. Instead of thinking how bad you were in a certain game, you share it with the rest of the team. Talk about it and you are able to refocus quickly for the next game where you are, again, improved and in better mindset to perform. Also for me, I don't have it in me. Mm. Then we played the second game against Zens. I was better individually, I was better uh, as a captain and then it goes and then boom, I, I trust myself. And I think for me, it's really important to admit your weakness towards the others. And if you do that, every, the openness in the team is way better. This role is really tough as you have to focus on macro of the game instead of micro, which are your individual plays, peaks and moves. Focusing on macro, you will be responsible for creating a plan, setting up a tactic or working on taking a specific area of a map. Having all these thoughts in your head will create situations where you are bound to die for a teammate and your stats are generally not gonna be great. That is a sacrifice pretty much every in-game leader has to take. And putting up bad numbers can take a huge toll on your impression how good you actually are. You will lose confidence, you will doubt yourself and think that you are weak link. Another leader who is very good at self-reflection is Kerrigan. Team leading phase, team packed with international superstars must be very stressful. If the team performs bad, it is usually Kerrigan that takes the most of the online hate. So I was interested how his self-reflection improves and enables him to become better instead. I think self-reflection is the most important piece of my career and where mm. I am. It's like always be reflective. I think I always bring up this example of Bumas when he joined the uh, mouse. And I saw how, how he did spray transfers. I was like, I've never seen this in my life. So I asked a 70 year old kid, how are you training this? And he told me on aim bots. So I went on doing that for two weeks and training. And suddenly in a 13, 13 round, I do a spray transfer. I've never done in my career before. <laughs> okay, now. So yeah, I, think, okay. I think what I adopted early was from Kobe, like be a sponge. I think everyone who is a tier one player has done something right to get where they are. Hmm. But they have maybe not done everything right, but they're doing one thing right. And if you ask the right question to this player, you get to know how he became one of the best players in the world. And you're like, okay, interesting how he practiced, the way he see the game, the way he thinks about teammates, uh, you know. So for me, that was a big part of being self-reflective and being there before someone else tell you doing something wrong. Mm. So I always try to correct myself and, and sometimes I have bad thoughts. I like I'm talking myself down when I shouldn't. But that's something I had to learn the last two years to be listening and be more positive in my inner voice. Like, okay, there's a bad tournament. You didn't do the right calls. Okay, was I not in the zone? Ask critical questions of myself. Where were I? How did I sleep the day before? Okay, everything was good. I just had a bad day then. You know, like asking this question myself made me realize it's much more than just aiming in the server. Sure. 
Like uh, there has to be other things that affect your gameplay on, on the day that you lost. You can hear firsthand from Kerrigan that whenever he's calling or individual skill falls, he asks himself a bunch of questions. Being completely honest with yourself, why you did so poorly often reveals hidden truth underneath your stats. Maybe your focus drifted away because you're stressing about your like school exams or something. Maybe you just slept poorly that night. Maybe you felt sick. Maybe you felt like your aim was shaky. Important thing is you recognize it. After you recognize it, you can sit down with your team and ask what is their aim routine, try to copy it, maybe challenge them that you can do it faster or better. I assure you, this open-minded approach will reignite your confidence and ability to perform next time, not only individually, but also as a leader. Hey there, if you're glad that this video is without boring ads, please make sure to hit that like and subscribe button so it can stay that way in the future as well. Helps this channel grow and that would be fantastic. Thank you. Now let's get back to the video. Number two, how to make the team work. We all know that buzzword, teamwork. You can praise the teamwork of a team for playing great and also you can point out that teamwork of losing team is terrible, but that's obvious. What really is a teamwork? In my experience and also experience of players, which I'm about to show you, the answer is right there, just in the wrong order. You create teamwork by working with the team. Young players nowadays that want to become professional players, they grow up playing face it and grinding online CS, but they miss out on the way Apex grew up, attending a lot of lands, talking face to face with others, etc. They miss something he called human touch. Like the relationship between the team and everything. That's that's exactly like what those young guys don't understand and they think that's okay it's all about my individual level and uh, I can if I'm good uh, I'm yeah. gonna be a good teammate but it's not how it works. I think that's also like just knowing like the human part because if when you play face it's like uh, doing alone and your home and you don't know like really well the human part. I remember like for we picked up Kyojin and Misoto and those guys are exactly like that. They didn't know what's like human relationship they were yeah. a bit lost in, the, in that sense and we had to teach them like our kids like yeah you need yeah. to be like that and this it's kind of huge handicap because if you eventually become a pro player which a lot of my viewers probably won't they will need to interact with your whole team and coach on daily basis 10 hours per day, 90% of the year, it's a lot. And if you struggle with socializing, it can make or break a team. I myself have been part of the teams where we benched or kicked players who we just couldn't vibe with. Our relationship was off, there was no friendship, we were just colleagues, but not friends. And that is bad. Both Kerrigan and Apex shared the same thought that when they started playing the game, they had some fundamentals of a teamwork from their past playing some traditional sport like football or ice hockey. That is what kids nowadays don't really have. If they grind computer games at an early age, there was no time for you to develop socially. Have a listen how Kerrigan summed it up. But that's also one thing right now where I feel like the young generation, I think many of the players I played with came from traditional sports. They grew up playing volleyball, tennis, football, whatever. They played a team game. Mm. Coming into Counter-Strike, they knew what a team was meant to be. You had a role, you had to do this and how to be social with your teammates. Now in that young generation, because they start that early at 10, sure. 9, yeah. they don't really learn how to be a team. Mm. So when they come in and you, you join your first professional team, how do you act to your teammates? How do you respect them? How do you see everything? How do you work on yourself in a team environment? Mm. And I think that's what we, like many of the older generation players, they were already Knowing that, the answers yeah. to that, and in, in traditional sports, you have like young players at 10 age, they already talk with a sports psychologist, you know, yeah, yeah. In, and learning how to the facilities are already exactly. there, yeah. the, su the support staff, everything. And number three is tips for young players who would like to become better leaders. I managed to gather a few tips for upcoming players who wish to be captains one day, who wish to lead and be a part of growing team. Hooksy, for example was asked why he thinks that Denmark was able to produce such amount of captains in CS when you look at the names like Kerrigan, Glaive, Snappy, Kadian or Hooksy himself just to show success of recent years. Mm, I think it's like the typical answer of uh, we have all these guys who are willing to teach uh, younger players at very early age like what team CS is and then you kind of go up the ladder and you learn more and more and basically people are not afraid to share what they know with others 
This creates a machine of knowledge that is spread amongst the players so everyone could improve at much faster rate. Not only in-game leaders. Danish culture is just perfect for experienced players willing to teach younger players who are willing to listen. This is why Denmark specifically leads the way in producing such amount of talented players and it gets even more obvious when you look at the population of the country for the context. Let's move on to Apex. According to him, this is the most important thing when it comes to handling your players on human level. For, for me, what's the really important part is that having a lot of talks with your players, a lot of outside talks, like one-on-one -on -one and one-on-one -on -one and team, but I love one-on-ones, just knowing about his life as well, how it's going, because life is a Russo Prime, Prime with a girlfriend and mm -hmm. his family, Prime with, I don't know, surgery or it can be a lot of things. And uh, having these close talks with the players is one of the most important thing. I think the human part is bigger than anything else mm -hmm. in, uh, in, in the coaching and in also in the being a captain. I think it's so important to be able to have that. So that's the first thing. Then Apex moves on to more technical tip that you can implement in actual CS. Then for, for CS, I think it's listening to them as well, what they want, but also having your own identity. And that's the tough part to find. Like, I, I don't balance. know, tomorrow, tomorrow I play with Nico. I know he's love searching. I know he's really good at that. But I also need to have my play style. So how do we adapt both together? And that's what is really hard. Uh, because he's gonna be unhappy and sometimes I will be unhappy. So just finding this like really small line that is really rough, but if you get it, it's you get the groove. Listen to your players, what they want to do and how they like to play, but also have your own identity as a leader. That is hard part to balance and always will be. Some players just don't mix together well since their vision of playing the game is polar opposites from each other. But that is the beauty of CS. There is no correct way to play the game, as there is no wrong way. Styles change, players evolve, meta shifts, and those who adapt fastest will be the winners. So, I hope these concepts shared by absolute masterminds of modern CS were helpful to you as they were helpful to me. If you're interested, you can find links to all these interviews in the description below. They were done by a podcast called Talking Counter, so shout out to them, and if you like the video, let me know in the comment section below what or who would you love to see me cover next. In the meantime, check the video that YouTube thinks you will like and see you there. Bye-bye.